and Living Color, the best thing ever that happened to me. Because it was the beginning of my rise, man. I mean, I, I learned everything I needed to know about TV, movies, and film by working with that cast and working with those writers. I got all my chops. That was like the combine for me, you know? Grad school. Oh, yeah, that was like, you know, the ninja training school. That was, that was boot camp. Now it ain't nothing I can't do. It was like, it was like the danger room in X-Men. What Keenan did was very simple. He took the baddest motherfuckers that there was at the time and put them in one place. You know, dealing with the dynamics of the personalities, the competitivism that was there. I've I, I, I become a pretty strong creator and, and pretty, pretty powerful performer because of that experience. Silent night. Silent Homies night. Homies night. I remember when I locked up the first time on camera. Yeah, the first time I got on camera, I couldn't talk because it was just, it all hit me. The reality of the show hit me. I was like, oh man, I'm on TV in front of millions of people. And Damon walked up to me. I'll never forget this. Damon Wayans walked up to me and he said, just do what you do. Just do what you do. That's all. It's simple. Do what you do. So I did what I did. I ain't stopped. I saw you take that toy. Now, if you need a toy and can't afford one, homie Claus will give you one. I got money. I stole it so I can be in a gang. It's part of my initiation. <laughs> what? My initiation. Yeah, I think staying in touch with your childhood is really important. But Hollywood taught me that lesson. Yeah, because, you know, there's... A, there, there, for some reason, there's, there's a developing a black Hollywood bourgeoisie in a way. Bourgeoisie meaning kind of cliques. And I felt alienated and outside of groups of blacks in Hollywood. And so I remembered, I had to go back to my childhood and remember I never really had to fit in with nobody. All I had to do was hang out with the people who were nice to me. So you want to be in a gang, huh? Make you feel like a big man, huh? Yeah. Well, since you're a big man, homie's got something special for you. Really? Yes, look in the bag. Let me see. I don't see nothing. You gotta look closer. Now what do you see? Hey, get... Nothing! That's the same thing your dumb ass get out of a gang. Nothing. 25 years I've been in the business. It's what I do best. You know, God created me to be a performer and a creator. It's very obvious. <laughs> it's very obvious. It's always been obvious from the start. So, I'm, and it's fun. You know, I got the best job on earth. I go and I make people laugh. And everywhere I go, people start smiling. So that's pretty cool for a child who was abandoned. You know what I mean? So to have the life where I'm never alone was a gift in itself. They got the best Spanish TV here in the world. You ever watch Spanish TV? It never stops. Man, the announcers make you want to see the show. <laughs> I think this shit come on Saturday. Yeah, I was adopted at age two by a white family. Yeah. Very interesting background I have. No better than anyone else's. You know, I'm sort of like the Moses of old, you know. Moses was given a little insight, you know, to the power of the world because he was brought up inside of the power of the, the world power at that time, you know. Thus, the, he was able to, um, you know, assimilate that particular faith and then bring that out into the world. That insight is what I have to share. It's a very simple message. Love has no color. That's it. That's my show. You ever been in the grocery store? You walking down the grocery aisle, you see a white woman talking to a baby carriage like whatever's sitting there got to be about 40. <laughs> you scared to walk down the fucking grocery aisle. She's talking into the baby carriage. Look at me now. Look at me now. When we left the car, did we or did we not have an agreement? I'm black, you know, but so is Moses. So one of the things I got out of being raised by white people is that, you know, the majority of white people don't have that mentality. Um, it was their forefathers that had that, but they benefit from the practices of their forefathers. That's all. It's just like me as a man. I'm not a sexist man but I benefit from living in a sexist society because I automatically get paid more than a woman would get paid. You know, that's not me being sexist. That's the benefic I'm the beneficiary of a system that's sexist. Right. See? 
Howard That's some deep, right that was pretty heavy duty, wasn't it? I mean, what is the use of communicating if you can't communicate the truth, you know? There's Def Jam, there's, there's Comic View, there's a lot of comedy venues out there for people to be able to listen to. And no one's any better than anybody else. My approach is just different. I think that we can do comedy. We African Americans, people of African descent, can do comedy and also instill very positive messages to ourselves. Because we have to, because we're inundated with negative messages. And the main one is, you ain't shit. And you don't mean shit to the world. And your history's last. And we're first. And we're the best. Europeans. Yeah, that's a good one too, huh? Uh, Mr. Iratani, look here. I'm Clavelle, and this here's my partner. Howard Tibbs III, how you feeling? <laughs> look just like Al Green. <laughs> don't he? <laughs> And we are Funky Finger Productions. Now look here, let me give you one of my business cards. You know I'm fresh out, Howard. <laughs> Damn! It can only be from my perception and opinion. But, um, and, and I'll try to be as objective as I possibly can. Right now, besides the fact that there's a lot of new uh, uh, black African-American talent coming into the, you know, Latifah, Ice Cube, uh, Andre 3000 and Big Boy, uh, Terrence Howard. I mean, the list goes on of all these beautiful new, new stars that are coming in and making a hell of an impact on the business. But, like professional sports, um, there's, there's no respect for the veteran. So, there's, there's, you know, you, you, you pretty much can't come into a, 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 a new movie situation with your quotes, with your financial quotes intact. It's basically, you work for scale. I don't care what movie you've been in and how much money you made, you work for scale. Or everybody gets paid the same. So it's either we take a new guy off the street and pay him the same, you know, or you're just not in the movie unless you get paid that. Um, and at the same time, new talent is breaking the barrier. So that's a good thing, there's some balance. We just gotta hang in there and keep doing quality work, and um, things will be all right. <laughs> Interesting title, Oh Nuts. No, 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 you got that backwards. Let me see this here. That's Stanko. <laughs> see, it's a love story. It picks up where Pretty Woman left off. Only this time, she does all the shopping at Fat Burgers. Yeah, it will happen again. It will happen again. There'll be another In Living Color. There'll be another great black sketch show. You know, when, I don't know. There's a lot of resistance in TV right now. I don't know if it's because of the war right now and they're trying to keep people defocused, or whatever it is, but the networks are ironclad, closed down on any black conceptual show, unless it has to do with, you know, sort of like a throwback black dude with long hair talking about smacking bitches and shit. What's next is tomorrow, if I make it there. I'm just glad about today, very grateful. Got a beautiful relationship with God today and that's all I need. Hey, this is Tommy Davis, and you're watching Real Black. Hey, I'm really black, too.